Hi friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It is Block Wednesday. So here they are. Here's all my blocks so far. Let's get this guy out of the way. And I have block, the next block. It is tiny but powerful. It's powerful because it's going to give you time to start working on your settings if you haven't done that yet. So what's the block? It's put your feet up. Where in the house do you put your feet up? We've got another little tiny house block. Little, it's like a little fairy house, like little uh, <laughs> tiny wee little cottage to put in your quilt and your home is quilt. So I have a couple of these to show you, but this is where the block goes and then there will be fabric on either side of it. So it is fits in there, which means you can start assembling um, another section you can get this part done um, we have these parts here before this whole middle section can be completed let me bring this over so let's take a look because I did a couple of fun things with this block to show you how different it looks so I'm gonna get cozy here because that's what it's all about. When you put your feet up, it means you're gonna be cozy, right? You're going to relax. You're going to have you know, a good book or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. <laughs> and you're gonna sit and relax. So I did four of these little blocks to show you. And guess what? I gave you an option so that if you have a fabric that you want to showcase as a door, or let's say you just have a bigger piece of fabric that looks nicer as a whole piece, you don't have to cut it up. So the pattern, you only make one, you just make one, but you can have an option. Then there's a little bonus pattern of just multiple houses where you could mix and match them up. So they look a lot different when you, you know, use different fabrics. Like here, the background is a bigger, a print and then I do use small prints on both of these and then I reverse the whole thing for a dark background on this guy which I just love and I may actually use the dark background one in the quilt I think that that might be really cool so there you go you have your little uh, put your feet up and what I want you to do is when you make your block tell me where you like to be in your home to put your feet up is there a favorite chair or favorite spot um, it might be the kitchen counter uh, I like to sit outside that's you know, whenever possible sit outside that is my go-to for uh, <laughs> for putting my feet up I also got finished oh wait wait before I do that so these are sew and flip you know, you're taking the corners here for the flying geese. The roof is a flying geese unit, but I'm sewing and flipping uh, the roof parts. So which means I had a bunch of half square triangles. So this is what I made, a little block that um, I think I'm gonna just turn it into a, a big mug rug or big coaster, however you want to trivet, however you want, whatever word you want to use. <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm just going to uh, sew it up, quilt it and use it rather than saving it, you know, for with all the other stuff. I'm just gonna use it. I also did the other two flying geese. So here is, this one will go this way. Look at the beach, the beach lady in there. There's, I just love that. <laughs> so I've got this unit and a house to put over here. So let's see, you get the whole quilt in the picture here. So we can see what's going on because this flying geese goes down here under under this part and then the house if I put the dark house the dark house will go up there so I may I may put the dark house I might put the the light one I will over at my website where you download the pattern I will have a picture of this straight on so that you can see it uh, see all the blocks together I did get a finish yes let me show you that while I'm up. This is the main street that I showed you the binding, the plaid binding on it. So main street is done. I need to get a picture of it, put it up in my gallery. So I've got two things I need to get into the gallery, but here is main street finished. It's just a girly girl quilt, isn't it? All these roses. I may end up giving this to my mom because my mom loves roses. And because I use some roses on the back, 
um, and a lot in the fabric. So that might go to her. Here's the plaid binding. And I did it with the machine blanket stitch. Uh, so I pulled it to the front and blanket stitch it down. There's a tutorial on my website. So it is thrilling, isn't it? Isn't it thrilling to have them done? I just love it. I love, a, I love a good finish. So that means I need to move on and pick another UFO so that I'm doing the cross stitch and the UFO I have going on all month that I'm keeping track of, you know, like, am I actually working on them each day a little bit, just a little bit, even 10 minutes is moves it forward. So I want to remind you, um, on the Jolly Bar because a few friends had jumped, were jumping in like just now on the Jolly Bar on, on Monday. And uh, so I wanna be sure that you understand that there's two projects we're doing with, two <laughs> that we're doing with the Jolly Bar. We're doing the Table Runner or my version of it being a sampler, which is um, like a little wall hanging or a small lap quilt. Those are the same number of blocks and you may need to buy a little bit more background fabric, but the Jolly Bar will make the blocks because it's the same number of blocks. It's not any different. Then where well, I'm also making at the same time, one of the projects from the book. So I'm doing the, um, the friendship bracelet and there's uh, 20 quilts in here. So other people are doing other ones. So you might see somebody showing progress on another quilt from the Jolly Bar 3 book while we're going on. This is the book. So if you don't have it yet, you can go get it. So I have, you know, I'm doing my friendship bracelet with on, on the white, I decided, because I've already cut it all up. It's already here. It's all in, look down here. I've got it all in the top of my rolling assistant. So you can see it's all laid out and I've started sewing and these are the crumbs, the extras that I'm gonna sew together. And I've already got these blocks done. I've already got like the sewing flips I'm keeping. So I've got this all organized in here. And then this is an extra. So this is, I did it as an example, not from the Jolly Bar, just similar fabrics of mine. So this will go into into my bin over here, I will get out and just put it in with the extra blocks. A bag of extra blocks, I have lots of extra blocks. Now the uh, sampler I'm doing with the kitty corn. And so I've pinned the kitty corn, the first block up on top of my crush. <laughs> I've got layers of things going on in here, but I wanted to be sure I didn't uh, lose track of the block and I wanted you to be able to see it up there all the time, of course. Now the other day I was mentioning basting powder and somebody was like, what is that? I never heard of that. So there are, uh, I think a couple of brands of it. So I'm using the bone ash, bone ash basting powder. And it looks a lot like salt when it comes out. So I wanted to show it to you. And what you're doing is you're lately, you're going to lately salt your um, batting and then you put the the top over it and you know press it with an iron so you're basically you know heating it heating the little crystals so that they bond the batting to the fabric but so that you can see it i am going to just i want to be sure you can see it i tested this so i could see it on here so it's it's just little crystals there they go see and they look a lot like salt. And when you put this on your batting and then layer your top on it and then you press, the heat, and I use steam, the heat will uh, sort of, you know, warm up those crystals and adhere, you know, it's a fusible, it's a fusible, so it'll fuse the two layers together. And then you can baste, you know, your whole quilt and then quilt it without pins. So if you have a bigger quilt, what I find is that uh, you, it does take a little bit more with a bigger quilt because you have to do sections. You know, you're sort of powdering one section, salting one section, and then you baste it, you know, you press it with the iron, then you shift the whole thing and you do another section. But I like it. I have not tried anything big. Um, maybe, like I did not do the main street. That would be too big. I don't want to have to deal with something that big right now, but I've done, I did the flower one, which was, it's about, you know, 
45 by 45. I did that, no problem. Uh, I've done all the table runners. You know, pretty much everything I've been quilting myself lately, I have been doing with this. And you need to practice a little bit with how much of this. You don't need tons. You don't want to layer it thick. It still should look like you can see through it, like I showed you there. Um, you know, this, yeah. So you don't want to be getting a super thick layer, but you do want to test it because the problem is it's light color and it's your batting is the same color. So it's a little hard to see it at times, but you get a feel, you get a feel for shaking it. And, you know, just like you do salt, like you don't really analyze your salt anymore. You just kind of know, you know, doo -doo -doo -doo. so that's the way this will work for you. You can try it. I got a link down below. I like it and it's really reasonable price. Uh, and so it's worth a try, even if you just use it for small ones, because it makes it no pins. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no pins. <laughs> now I did, I am working on this. I am working every day so that I can get April done and then I can move on. So I've got like all of the uh, border part for April done and I'm now ready to do, oops, Oop. I'm now ready to do the uh, umbrella. So the color changes I'm going to do is instead of red, I'm going to do the umbrella just like this, but instead of red, I'm going to do pink. So I'm going to do a pink umbrella with a yellow middle and then the gray handle and the little, you know, raindrops, of course, <laughs> April showers, right? Yes. Speaking of April showers, it's been pretty nice here in Virginia, except for the skunk. We have a skunk who is wandering around the neighborhood, just stinking everything up. And last night, my studio space smelled so bad. It was like, ugh. <laughs> this is, and I guess it just, he was uh, not happy outside somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what they do, but I hope he goes move somewhere else. I hope he goes to another neighborhood very soon. But he's been wandering around here for several days and this was as close as he got the stinky ah, skunks yuck, yuck 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 so if you have if you have one i sympathize with you they are just oh. I, i'm a city girl i'm not used to all of that all right my friends you're going to make little houses you can either make one with a door today or you can make one without a door you just need one for your quilt but I made a bunch to show you how cute they are. And maybe you're going to make a whole bunch of them from your scraps and you can do the bonus project. The links are all down below. Over at my website is where you're going to pick up everything. Thank you for being here. Thank you for using my links. They support our small family business. Greg and I love you. Mwah. See you online.